Hmm? You want me to tell you something about Gita? Yes. <laughs> One day, a very sweet man asked me, oh, why you are writing a commentary on Bhagavad Gita? Uh, what, is, what is your idea? I said, if you hear a song of a, a good music sung by someone and if you have a good voice when you are alone you would like to to imitate the song wouldn't you <laughs> some beautiful song heard sometime and in your loneliness if you have a good voice you try to imitate that song and try to try to sing it and try to Thrill the whole atmosphere with that song. <laughs> Bhagavad Gita it means the song of God, the song of truth, and the embodiment of truth, Lord Krishna sung the song of life. And he sang the song of eternal life. And in my loneliness, I try to... <laughs> I try to to, to uh, imitate or copy the rhythm of his song. Firstly, I am I'm commenting on Bhagavad Gita for the joy of my own uh, writing. When I dwell on Gita, it's a great joy because I find as if the ocean of happiness begins to, uh, begins to swell in waves of bliss. You know, if you put yourself in hot water and after some time you don't feel the water hot, but if you, uh, remaining inside, if you stir the water, you begin to feel the splashes of, of, of heat. So it is the waves of, of warm water that, that give you the, the experience of heat not even remaining in water. So even when you are in bliss consciousness, then you need some waves something, some stirring element to stir the waves of bliss and then you feel that bliss. If you don't stir, you don't feel. <laughs> so, Lord Krishna stirred the waves, the waves into the ocean of bliss, hmm? into the ocean of life. And he stirred the bliss, the waves of bliss in the ocean of life in order that people from time to time at all times may begin to feel the, the, the waves of happiness in their life. It needs a study. Bhagavad Gita is, a, is as if propelling those waves of bliss. It is a song of life sung by the embodiment of truth, the embodiment of eternal life. And when the, huh, when the ocean begins to sing its own glory, then the waves of glory are great. No other man can sing the glory of other man. One can very well sing one's own glory. <laughs> That's why the, 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 the current, the current uh, uh, system of writing the autobiographies, people begin to write their own autobiographies because they know themselves, others know the surface value of life. Lord Krishna sang the song of life because he represented, he represented eternal life, he represented cosmic life, he represented life content. He only could sing. Many, many have sung from on the long corridor of time. Many have sung the, the song of life. Lord Krishna sang it for us in Bhagavad Gita. And as we see, life have, uh, the life has uh, infinite phases. All, all sorts of things are different phases of life. The song of life, or Bhagavad Gita, 
is concerned with bringing fulfillment to every phase of life at every level of consciousness. And in order to sing a song so full and so complete and so comprehensive and so perfect, the, the, the writer, the, the, record, the, the someone who recorded the, the, such a song was sage Vyasa, Vyasa of perfect vision. He starts Bhagavad Gita and the very first verse of Bhagavad Gita is a marvelous exposition to, to lay the ground for such a song to be sung. It starts with the, with the question. The question asked by the Trashtra, I will not go into the detail of the Trashtra, by, uh, to Sanjaya. Sanjaya was a man who was bestowed with the power of Sanjaya was bestowed by, with the power of clear voice and clear audience. That means there was nothing hidden from his view, nothing of the past, present and future. Everything was clear to him. To such, to such a clear vision, the question is asked. And the, the words of the first verse are so remarkable. Every verse has such great extensive meaning that the whole life could be spent on the uh, on interpretation of one word. The first word is dharma. Dharma is the in invincible power of nature which upholds, that which upholds everything. Dharma is like the sap in a tree. The sap upholds the life of all the different phases of the tree. Like that the dharma or the field of being or absolute bliss consciousness is that field on which the life of everyone is based. So, when the question is made, eh, the first verse is the enquiry, enquiry into what happened. And what happened when the first word is dharma, that invincible, omnipresent, almighty power of nature that underlies every existence in, in, in creation, then the question means, tell me all about everything in creation. And this question is made to Sanjaya, who know, knows everything of the past and present and future. This is, this is the interpretation of the, of the first word of, of the first verse of Bhagavad Gita, that the enquiry is being put to, to, to know all about everything in creation and to know on the basis of practical cognition, so that there may not be any misunderstanding left. Now, this analysis of, of, of things on the basis of direct cognition is the subject dealt with by Nyaya philosophy. Nyaya is the name of a, 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 a school of philosophy. There are six systems of Indian philosophy. Nyaya is one. Now, Nyaya philosophy does not deal with the nature of things. It only gives us a proper and scientific way of analyzing things, a, uh, a way of discriminating things. So, with the word Sanjaya and Dharma, we find the, the whole field of Nyaya philosophy uh, has been asked. This is a question. The whole of Gita is going to explain the different ways of faultless examination of this situation. This is one Nyaya philosophy. Another aspect of uh, Indian philosophy is Yoga philosophy. The verse says that on the field of Dharma, on the field of the Gurus, gathered together my sons and the sons of Pandu gathered to fight. Those who have gathered, they have gathered to fight. It means they have different tendencies, different likings, different natures. That means the whole variety of nature is assembling together. Now this is yoga. Yoga is union. Union of different tendencies coming at one place. 
So assemble on the field of dharma, those eager to fight. If eager to fight and assemble from these two words, these two words throw an inquiry into the field of diversity and uh, the unity that, com- that combines them. From these two, two words, Gita is going to, to answer the whole philosophy of, of yoga. And the que- query, the, the question is laid in this verse. Another system of, of philosophy is Vedanta. Vedanta deals with the transcendental aspect of absolute existence. Now, the verse in the, in the, in the word in the verse says that my, my sons and those of Pandu, those of Pandu and my, they are enemies of one another. My sons are enemies of Pandu. So when the sons of Pandu are contrasted with my sons, that means my sons, the Aham Tattva, the, the, the element of I, and that which is contrasted to the element of I, what is that? That which contrasts with I is the element of the transcendental consciousness. The transcendental absolute consciousness with the relative individual element of I. The distinction between them is dealt in the Vedanta philosophy. So here is the seed from which the whole of the tree of Vedanta is found in the whole of Bhagavad Gita. Another system of Indian philosophy that is found in the first verse asking the question is Vaisheshika. Vaisheshika philosophy deals with examining the special qualities of a thing. And these special qualities are found in the, in the first verse when it says in, on the field of dharma, on the field of the kuru. Here is the adjective. The field of kuru, that is the field of dharma. This is specifying the field. They say those my sons and sons of Pandu assemble together, eager to fight. All these adjectives demand a closer inspection and investigation into the field of uh, special qualities which is dealt with in the field of Vaisheshika philosophy. Hmm? These, are the, these are the different systems of, of philosophy. Another, hmm? one more, Sankhya philosophy. Sankhya means and they count the, the elements in creation, how many elements in creation, how many elements go to make the relative field of life. They say the aham tattva, the element of I, the ego, the intellect, the mind, five senses, five pranas, and the five, uh, five elements of earth, water, air, space, and fire. All these five elements, five pranas, Hmm? Five life breaths, five senses of action, five of perception, and the mind, intellect, ego. These 24 elements are supposed to constitute the entire relative field of creation. And the Sankhya philosophy claims that proper and thorough knowledge and experience of every element of, uh, every of these 24 elements will bring liberation to man, liberation from bondage. Now liberation from bondage is the purpose of every every school of thought, but they have their own special ways of approach. And the, we find that the words of the first verse give, a, uh, give an extensive field for all these six systems of Indian philosophy to be developed and this has been developed because it's only through the system, through the clarification of, uh, of the reality of life from these six different angles of vision that one could really live that eternal freedom in life. You know, there are six. Why? Because for the perfect knowledge of anything, you have to, have to look it from six directions. From front, from behind, from right and left, from above and from below. So, seeing a thing from six different directions alone will give you the correct perception and the full knowledge about a thing. 
therefore when the song of life is to be sung it is it is to be it is to be sung from six different um, directions then only it will present to us the full value of life and the final complete fulfillment to living one important true system of indian philosophy is karma mimamsa developed by jemini the son of uh, the disciple of vyasa karma mimamsa deals with the theory of karma and uh, what is the word that uh, opens the way for the detailed study of karma me mansa the theory of karma uh, in the whole of bhagavad gita the the last word of the first two verses it says tell me sanjaya what the Uh, what my people and those of pandavas do this doing what did they do inquiry into the action into the nature of action this inquiry into the nature of action is developed throughout bhagavad gita hmm? to bring out a, a, a full perception all the, the theory of karma and the karma yoga is is the whole the whole uh, range of the philosophy of action karma mimamsa and the word that is uh, responsible to open the chapter of of sankhya philosophy is the i he says my by sons and the sons of pandu my now the my is the fear of the i in order to have a clear knowledge about i we have to have to have we have to know the different aspects of life all the inner and outer aspects of life inner and outer aspects of life need the knowledge of all those 24 elements which are the the um, the primal factors for the sankhya philosophy so like this sankhya and mimamsa and yoga and vedanta and nyaya and vaisheshika these are the six systems of indian philosophy indian philosophy is one compact whole these six systems are the visions of knowledge from six different directions knowledge from six different directions only gives us only makes us the whole knowledge and knowledge of the fullness of life is given by all these six different systems of philosophy contained in the whole of the song of the lord hmm? all these points are very are brought out in great detail it's a very great fun to read this commentary and because it has been a joy to me i hope it will be a joy to every reader and not to not only be a joy of a superficial nature it will get grounded in his soul the the soul purpose and the way and the fulfillment of his life through attaining bliss consciousness through transcendental meditation and the most fascinating part of our commentary of bhagavad gita is that we find every system of philosophy dealt with in every verse of bhagavad gita there are 700 verses of in bhagavad gita and every verse gives us the teaching of every system of philosophy and then the best part of it is that every philosophy finds its full eh? every system of philosophy finds its fulfillment through the regular practice of transcendental meditation so transcendental meditation is the is the essential core of the teaching of every system of indian philosophy which goes to give us a, a formula a complete formula for a life in fulfillment jai gurudev